Hello, bonjour. So we should be live. So I'm going to check on my computer. So we'll see. Um, I've also asked you some questions um, on my Instagram. So I will definitely also answer some of them um, just before you all join uh, the live, the live basically. Uh, also, if you can hear me or not, just um, tell me. So let's see if I can um, see your comments. Okay, so. Okay, hello Rebecca. So just to start with, I'm going to answer some um, of your question. I can hear you, perfect. If you can hear me, this is... Um, Perfect. Also, by the way, if you do like uh, those kind of live, I do a lot of them actually on my um, Instagram channel. Um, I mean, on my Instagram account. Um, and maybe I will also do more um, on uh, YouTube. So yesterday on my Instagram account, I've actually um, asked you some questions. So maybe I should start um, with this. So for now, it is not live on my computer. Why? I don't know. I mean, this is the power of technology. <laughs> okay, now it's working. Um, okay. So, um, hello from Germany. Hello from, from Paris. Where are you in Germany? Uh, coucou. Uh, bonjour. Hello. Best UV sunscreen for all these sunscreen. Uh, for olive skin tone, I guess, without tackiness or white cast. Oh, you are asking for a lot. So recently on my YouTube channel, you can see that I have done actually um, uh, videos about uh, high protection uh, UVA. So the one that I do tend to recommend are the one from um, La Roche Posay. One of the reasons because La Roche Posay is one of the f uh, of those few brands that does disclose the UVA uh, protection. Uh, so we are very lucky uh, for this. So you have the Ultra Cream, for example, that is actually not bad at all. And it has a UVA protection of 35 or 36, something like that. This one doesn't have any white cast. It is not really uh, tacky. So this one could be um, actually a good one uh, to try. I do uh, invite you to actually check and watch my video because I do swatches and also talk a little bit more about the texture and um, etc. Okay, um, what else? Uh, is the quality for you um, okay? Because actually I'm using uh, my phone to film in the front camera because it is easier like that I can uh, see myself and see if I am in frame or uh, not. Okay, um, so uh, what about G Cosmune uh, products from Dermy Girl? I've actually never tried them, so I do know that they are a key beauty brand from South uh, Korea, so I will have to, to try them basically and tell you a little bit more um, about it. But for now, I've never tried them, I've never also looked at their formula, so, um, so basically I don't know. But I will have like a little bit more of um, key beauty product. I can already t tell you that I've uh, ordered one uh, product, one key beauty product. This is one from Dr. Jard. This is um, a new uh, sunscreen. It is actually one of my subscribers from um, Instagram that have talked to me about this one. This is the Solar Biome, the Ampoule SPF 50 plus peer rating of Oplaxis. What is really interesting is that when you look at the ingredient list, it seems to be formulated, and I'm talking about in terms of filters, like a European sunscreen in dust. I think the first filter is Juvenal A+, Plus, and I'm all about this, so I really love this. So I'm hoping that the UVA protection will be um, very high. Okay, um, so... Uh, I want to ask about exfoliation and retinol for sensitive and dehydrated skin. So the rational with retinol, so first of all, how old are you? If you are uh, in your 30s or older, you absolutely need um, a good retinol. This is for sure. Uh, so the first thing that I would start is just introduce a retinol product. I would go probably the easiest way to tolerate retinol is to start with probably 0.3% of uh, retinol. Like don't go crazy. Um, immediately, uh, especially when you don't know how your skin will react to it. So you need to build a tolerance to it. So first of all, maybe start like three times per week with 0.3 retinol. Do it for at least a week. 
then do it for um, the second weeks every other night and then you are going to do it every single um, evening for at least a month to two months and if you have a lot of uh, damage from the sun, for example, uh, a lot of wrinkles, or you are in your 40s or more, so in that case, you uh, probably also need to use 1% uh, uh, retinol. So this is also um, a good option. So in that case, you start with the 0.3, you do it at least for a month to two months, so two skin cycles, and then you transition to 1% um, uh, retinol. Once you have tolerated the retinol after at least a one or two months with 1% retinol, this is um, most likely the time to reintroduce something to expedite your skin. In general, I do prefer a, a good acid. So if you want to be like extra bougie and you want something, uh, um, uh, like I said, more innovative, try gluconolactone, for example, and check my video for uh, tomorrow. I will publish it on Sunday. Uh, it also could be... Um, um, HA, like a mandelic acid, for example, don't and introduce it only once per week. But it's important first to tolerate the retinol, then once your skin is used to it after two to three months, this is the moment that we can that you can introduce um, an AHA. So bonjour from Autriche, hello from Paris. Um, Rebecca, thoughts on timeless vitamin C if you're really, So it's been a long time since I've looked at the formula, but I, I recall that it is um, an excellent one. I think this is, this is going to be the next one that I will actually order. I am still finishing my bottle of the Sea Glow from Geek and Gorgeous that I absolutely love. If you're in Europe, this is very easy to get. So I, I would advise you actually to get the one from Geek and Gorgeous and also because it is so um, affordable, basically. Um, okay, hello. Do you have products recommendation for technique? Acne and rosacea and a good vitamin C. Um, absolutely, yes. I have actually a videos about uh, redness, so definitely check it out because I go really like in depth uh, about this subject. This is very important because in most cases, a lot of people doesn't really have rosacea, but um, the issue, the redness and etc. and the inflammation, the chronic inflammation on your skin is basically due to what you are doing to your skin. So basically go and check this video what is the title? Redness and rosacea, something like that. But if you uh, type uh, on YouTube, basically, redness and Cyril, you will find my video. Um, okay. Um, okay, what else? <laughs> we love the lives. So definitely, if you do love it, I will do it uh, more often because I also love to do lives uh, with you. I can't hear uh, anything. Um, I don't know, it seems that you are the only person that complains about it, so I cannot tell you. Um, okay, Epidermal Growth Factor, EGF, uh, backing up the scientific uh, database. Yeah, there are some scientific um, data on it. Um, so EGF is Epidermal Growth Factors. So your cells, the epidermal cells, so the cells that are just beneath, beneath the skin barrier, which I named the keratinocyte, they have a receptors on the surface um, that can be bound to the EGF, basically, and EGF is known to be important for the differentiation of the cells. So the differentiation means, basically, this is the... Um, how can I say this? <laughs> this is, uh, like, the process of how your skin made, makes new skin, in a way. We call it uh, differentiation, and EGF is one of those cues that are important for the differentiation um, of your cells. Retinol is also um, another one. Uh, we also know that EGF can help to promote actually the healing of uh, the skin. I will need to read more, especially for anti-aging, because of course the whole idea that when you are going to apply it on your skin, as long as your skin is not, um, your skin barrier is not damaged, basically we cannot really know if the EGF will do uh, something or not, so just Keep this um, in mind. Hello from Italy. Hello. Uh, so I want to ask you about exfoliation. I've already answered this one. Uh, do you do fillers? So currently I do have fillers just around my eyes. If you look at my videos like uh, earlier before, you can see that my eyes were more um, hollowed basically. Um, they didn't change much the amount of wrinkles and anything that I have um, on my face. It is my uh, friend, Dr. Kado. Uh, he lives in Virginia Beach in the United States that uh, did it on me. So I don't know if you can uh, really see it, but basically my eyes are less uh, hollowed. Um, but like always, 
for fillers, only uh, go and consult with a doctor. Don't go to a nurse. No, go with a doctor because my friend also explained me that from time to time, it's extremely rare actually, but the fillers can go into a blood vessel and block, uh, and block the blood flows. So of course you do want to do it with a doctor. Also doctors are trained to know the anatomy of the face, which is extremely, extremely um, important. Um, mm, 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 mm. I see really, is it okay to use a retinol every single night? As long as you tolerate uh, the retinol, absolutely. If your skin is in constant uh, inflammation mode after two to three months, it means that uh, you cannot really tolerate the retinol, so I would not uh, actually do it. Uh, Qu'est-ce qui rend les marques uh, coréennes et japonaises si efficaces et si réussies? So it's a question in French and in English. I'm going to answer in English and in French. So it's a question about um, Korean brand and Japanese brand and why they are so efficient. I think one of the main differences is actually most Korean brand and most Japanese brand, they do use a lot of uh, humectants. And on top of this, uh, you can clearly see that every type of brands, uh, they really emphasize with also the texture and the feeling or the, um, yeah, how basically the products feels on the skin and they feel very, very nice on the skin, I have to say, like compared to more Western uh, brands. I think this is the main difference. This being said, be careful because also in K-Beauty product, even though um, some of the products are really uh, well made, they do have perfume, they also do have essential oils. I do advise you to be um, as perfume free and as essential oils uh, free as possible um, because you can never know, they can trigger inflammation. This is not what you want. Of course, if it is a sunscreen and if it has uh, perfume, but you don't have uh, any issue with it, you love it and you are going to reapply it, <laughs> you them, uh, of course, like this one, this is the one that I have just uh, on my desk around here. This is the Ines Free. The long lasting sunscreen, uh, this one does have a perfume, but this is a lovely one. It does have a, a slight uh, white cast, but this is very, very um, ele elegant. Hello from Connecticut. Hello, I've never been to Connecticut. Actually, I've been many times to the United States, but not to um, Connecticut. Um, is it possible to put a chemical sunscreen on top of a tinted physical sunscreen? So first of all, please stop saying chemical sunscreen. Uh, it doesn't mean anything. Everything is a chemical. So the proper name is organic based uh, filters. So if you live in the United States, the issue with it is that um, organic based sunscreen will lay only on with avobenzone to provide a UVA protection. Therefore, if you use a mineral based sunscreen, it will use most likely zinc oxide. And zinc oxide cannot mix uh, with evobenzone. If you live elsewhere in the world, it is not going to be really um, an issue. So it's only going to be an issue if you live in the United States. Um, of course, if the tinted sunscreen that you are going to use, and you will use plenty of it, I can hear the correct amount that you need, which is uh, one fourth of a teaspoon, maybe less, but in that case, you need to measure your face. Um, this is not going to be uh, much of an issue, of course. Uh, what do you think of Dr. Jack, uh, Dr. George Sika Repair Lair, uh, Gaging in Japan? Oh my God, you're from uh, Japan. I think I recognize you from um, uh, Instagram and also from my <laughs> YouTube channel. Hello. Um, I'm not a big fan of this line because I recall that it does have a lot of essential oils, which is a shame because I have to say that the overall composition is pretty well um, done. What do you think about the NAOMA 50 plus sunscreen? I saw it on one of your Instagram pictures. Uh, so it's a question from Anne. Coucou Anne, I know that you are French. Um, the problem with this one is that it is quite oily. Um, it is quite pleasant to use. If you have more dry skin type, you can definitely uh, use it. The UVA protection is 25 because, well, I was lucky. I did DM them and they told me that the UVA protection is of um, 24, maybe. Maybe it is 24 for what I recall. For every day, this is uh, an excellent sunscreen as long as you have more uh, dry skin type. Of course, if you have more normal to oily skin type, this one is a little bit heavy. Uh, and in that case, you, it's probably better to skip your moisturizer and maybe also to apply some powder uh, on top. Hi, Cyril. Vitamin C serum better in the morning um, or night? Actually, um, either way. Um, it has been shown actually only in peak skin model. I have to say that uh, the saturation of the skin with 15% of vitamin C, so L-ascorbic acid. Always be careful. There are so many damn brands that tell you that 
they use uh, vitamin C, but they don't. They use a derivative of vitamin C. This is completely different. Um, so if it is ascorbic acid, it is not much of a difference, I have to say. Um, so basically, the vitamin C, I think, saturates the skin for almost uh, 48 hours or something like that, if I recall correctly. So uh, basically, it would be uh, fine, of course. Uh, Hey, Shasha, is it Xiao? How do you say it? I don't know, does it mean uh, little? So I guess you are in China right now. I, I think this is really like the beauty of life here on YouTube also on Instagram. This is uh, so, so nice to be able to just communicate with, uh, to communicate with all of you all over uh, the world. I really love this. This is also why I wanted to start this channel, uh, mainly in English and not in French, to be able to, to connect with all of you from all different places um, of the world. Okay, I watch a lot of your videos where you recommend SPF 50 sunscreen. I have started using an SPF 50 plus from having dry touch, but after a month, my skin has become so irritated and red. So in that case, just stop. Stop this one. This indeed could happen. So I, I don't exactly know why. I wonder if it is not from the channels of M. Um, in general, channels of M is dispersed into a matrix that use decyl glucoside to stabilize it, and decyl glucoside is a surfactant. So I wonder if it is not because of this that it does um, irritate your skin. So in that case, I would uh, change and of course avoid any sunscreen with uh, channels of M. Every time when I do a review on my channel, I will talk about um, the the filters in your sunscreen, so you will know if it has tinnels of M, but most likely you, you cannot use them because of the tinnels of M, so I would avoid it. Uh, 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 uh. I Cyril, is Isdin sunscreen as good as Anesam? It, it is tricky to um, to answer this question. So if we just talk about UVA, uh, I mean UV protection, so SPF and UVA protection, we do know that because this is a new European sunscreen, uh, you, can, you, are, you are basically guaranteed that it is at least a UV protection of 20 for every SPF 50 plus. In Japan, it is around 16. I'm pretty sure that actually most Japanese sunscreen would be also around 20, but I cannot be sure, of course, uh, of this. So uh, for the ESD, like the spot prevent, according to the brand, the UV protection is of 60. Most likely it is higher than the ANESA, but I cannot be sure um, of it, of, um, of course. Uh, in terms of texture and etc., I would say both of them are is is sort of a dupe of uh, of the Anessa. I would say also I do find that the white cast of the is is a little uh, less significant than the one from Anessa. I'm talking about the perfect milk. Bonjour, what do you think of Biologic Recherche serums? Are they worth the money? I have a video about Biologic Recherche. I am not that impressed. Some of them they are interesting. They have one with uh, placenta, for example. They basically no um, scientific data on it. I also doubt that this is like proper placenta from a human because this is animal product from us. So most likely this is not exactly the case. Um, uh, yes, this is very, very expensive. So do you absolutely have to use it? Not uh, really. Uh, Coucou Siri, to start using retinol, what do you think about starting with Dr. Sam Flawless Nightly Serum for two months and then go to Ezra Ampoule Retinol? Eh? Yeah, you can absolutely do it like this. This is actually um, a good things to do. A question for Marlena. Hey, Alina. Oh, yeah, I also saw it on on my live on um, Instagram. I've got the Polychos 1% retinol and now I'm waiting for my Anessa milk. Thank you, Siri, for sharing your, no, your knowledge. You are most welcome. If you are using the Anessa mild milk, this one doesn't contain any alcohol, so you are basically completely... Uh, Okay, with it, if it is the perfect milk, it does have alcohol. So make sure that your skin really tolerates well the retinol to make sure that the alcohol is not going to irritate your skin. If your skin barrier is in like in uh, perfect condition, it will be fine. Uh, also, a very bougie way of using the Anessa is to use it on, on your hands and also on your arms. What I love about this one is that it sets. This sunscreen sets and doesn't budge, doesn't move. So, uh, especially in the summer when we are really sweaty, it's very humid. I love to go to Asia. Um, most of the time where I go, it's very humid. I mean, all those damn sunscreen that doesn't set, it's, it's like too greasy. It is a greasy mess and then it transfers to the clothes and you are not protected. I don't like this. Hello, uh, Cyril from Canada. Hey, Jenny. Uh, ah, oh, I'm currently in Paris. I can get all your recommended French uh, products. Yeah, indeed. 
Um, when did you arrive in Paris? So, Tanja, thank you for recommending uh, Geek and Gorgeous. You are more than welcome. Okay, hello. Uh, hello again from Canada. Hi, Dylan, and thank you so much for uh, your informative and fun video. You are, you are welcome. Uh, good sunscreen available in Canada and using your UV filters. Oh, um, I don't know. For me, it's uh, not very easy to know what is available in Canada, and I don't even know if I can um, if I can order basically the product to, to try them. So it's uh, it's always a little bit uh, tricky. Hi Cyril, I am trying to come up with a routine to fade acne scars and hyperpigmentation. So again, acne scars. If it is like a hole on the skin, basically an indentation of the skin, uh, most likely none of the products are going to use the best one probably would be, I would say, the um, retinoid, basically retinol and even better tretinoin. Uh, if you do have acne that leaves like those type of scars with indentation, you absolutely have to go and consult with a dermatologist to have like a very, uh, uh, to have like basically a routine to manage your acne. This is of utmost importance. Um, also, um, if it is uh, hyperpigmentation, this is not super difficult to treat. Actually, it could be simply with an acid. Like uh, the ordinary, the 30% AHA, you use, you, uh, you use a Q-tips and you are going to apply it on the dark spots to help them to fight them. Of course, sunscreen, I mean, so, so important. Uh, SPF 50 plus with a high UV protection uh, would be optimal, uh, of course, but this is one way of uh, doing it. If it is a red spot, um, I've never really found any product that really helps to um, alleviate uh, faster the redness. What is going to happen is around like one month to two months. It of course depends on how much the dermis has been damaged by the pimple, the breakouts. Uh, they are going to fade anyway, uh, but it can take times. It really depends. Like for me, when I get like a big pimples, thanks God, because I'm older, I don't get them much now. But like for, um, for the red marks to completely fade out, I need at least a month, at least a month to almost two months. And this is normal. I've never found any product that really boost, boosted. What could have probably it's a combination of vitamin C, of ascorbic acid and also of retinol. But honestly, I've never found like a drastic difference. Hello from Romania. Hello. It's been so long that I've been to Romania. I've been to... Um, Yach, is it the name of the city? Maybe I pronounced it um, really wrong. Like years ago, I really loved my time. Uh, they're so beautiful also. Bonjour de Besançon. <laughs> Salut. Uh, okay, I would like your opinion on the Avin, the anti-rougeur force so with the run anti redness uh, for broken capillary. Thank you. Uh, I'm not a big fan of them, really. Mm not big. Uh, what is going to work, especially for broken uh, capillaries, is tranexamic acid. This one is a game changer, like literally. So the one that I always recommend that is so damn hard to find is the one from um, Adalabo, the Chirujun Deep Whitening Cream. So the one in the blue pot with a deep shade of blue. This one is wonderful. Really, and what you can do is on the broken capillaries, you use like um, a thick amount, especially in the evening, and you will see that all the blood vessel will be less visible after 20 to 30 minutes. Also use a very, very clean uh, routine, no perfume, no essential oils, absolutely no alcohol. You really don't want to um, uh, basically have um, inflammation. Go and check my video about redness. Um, okay. Uh, 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 uh. What else? Uh, so it's a question in French uh, about uh, an application which is named NC Beauty. Uh, do I re ne recommande pas certains produits, par exemple le Cicavit Crème et celle de Mixer dont tu parlais avec une note, quelle peut être la raison? So I'm going to answer in English and in French. So in English, this is one of the type of applications. So in French, we have UK. Yuka uh, and NC Beauty. So they are those trashy stuff. We also have uh, Que Choisir. You also have in the United States EWG. Those stuff are like just a bunch of crap. Really, that I really dislike the type of stuff. Why? It's because it is done by people that have absolutely no background in, in science. They don't 
probably read the papers. I'm pretty sure that they don't understand the papers. They don't understand the experiments behind them. And they decide to do like a sort of a rating and some product of all of a sudden dangerous. And what I actually dislike the most is not this, is that the problematic ingredients are often not referred as uh, problematic and this I really, really dislike it. So this is, um, so I do not basically recommend it. So now I'm going to answer in French. Donc toutes ces applications comme Inci Beauty, il y a aussi, um, comment elle s'appelle cette application, Luca par exemple, aux états unis il y a EWG, euh, ils racontent en, en gros n'importe quoi, ce ne sont pas faits par des scientifiques, je pense qu'ils ne lisent même pas les articles scientifiques, euh, donc ils, ils sont incapables de juger de la qualité scientifique des travaux qui ont été faits, et donc régulièrement ils vont euh, donner des mauvaises notes à certains produits alors qu'ils sont excellents, et au contraire, et je pense que ce qui m'énerve le plus, c'est quand on va trouver certains produits qui sont euh, très très bien classés, très très bien notés par ces saloperies d'application, alors, euh, alors que ce sont des produits qui sont potentiellement très très irritants et surtout pas compatibles avec les peaux sensibles. Donc il ne faut absolument pas se baser euh, là-dessus. Euh, ce que je voudrais aussi rajouter, c'est que la législation européenne et la législation aussi, euh, par exemple, euh, américaine et aussi japonaise, la majorité du temps autorise tous ces produits. C'est fait par des comités d'experts, c'est la même chose en Australie. Euh, et ça, ce sont des gens qui ont une vraie compétence euh, scientifique. Ok, uh, donc pas d'inquiétude quoi. Uh, Tanja, what is your opinion uh, on Cisla? A bunch of crap. I think I'm going to do a video uh, about them. And way, way too expensive for what it is really. So they are using like a ton of botanical extracts. Again, we don't really have any much of um, background, of scientific background behind them. I mean, if at least they were... Um, sold at a, at a lower price point, like around 30s, maybe you can try one of those. Uh, I also do think that they are loaded with perfume. I mean, no, don't waste your money uh, on that. And also don't use like the start of the heart um, active, so why bother? Really, I also think that you have a question about Tata Harper. I have actually a video about this one. Uh, so again, go to my YouTube channel, you, uh, you type Tata Harper with Cyril and you will find the video. I absolutely dislike this brand and so, so expensive for what it is like. If you want uh, um, watch me to spill the tea on the brand, definitely check this one, <laughs> this video, really don't like it. Um, a question from Baltars, are copper tone sensitive SPF 50 is my favorite Canadian sunscreen. It's part zinc oxide. Yeah, but the problem is it is an SPF of 50 plus and it only relies on, um, on zinc oxide, if I'm not mistaken. So the problem is that the UV protection will be probably uh, very low, especially the UVA type 1. When you are formulated a sunscreen on the mineral base, uh, you basically need titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. And when you look at the absorbance, titanium dioxide absorb UVB and UVA type 2, barely any UVA type 1. And the zinc oxide is broad spectrum, UVB, UVA type 2 and UVA type 1. The main problem with zinc oxide is that it does not absorb a lot of UVA type one. So the protection will be uh, pretty low, basically, which is not what you want, especially on a daily um, basis. And with an SPF of 50 plus, why they do formulate an SPF of 50 and not a, of a 50 plus? It's because like this, they can use less zinc oxide and less also titanium dioxide when they do. And therefore, the UVA or specially type 1 protection will be lower because it only relies on zinc oxide. So you can use it like on top of, an, of another sunscreen if you want to, but don't only rely on this one. If you really want to try on your mineral based uh, sunscreen, uh, try the one from Purito. I have also a video uh, about Purito, like for every day, this one has um, um, a UVA protection of 19. Uh, of course, I'm pretty sure that the filtration system for UVA type 1 will not be optimal. You need to remember something is that the UVA protection, whether it is with the European methods or the PPD method that you have in Asia, uh, measure a reaction on, on your skin, basically the hyperpigmentation. It does not necessarily translate with the absorption of UVA type 2 and UVA type 1. So basically, if you have a high absorption with UVA type 1 and a pretty losing one with UVA type 1, you can still achieve some decent uh, UVA protection on the package. But you do want to have a better filtration for UVA type 1, especially for anti-aging. Uh, 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 um. Okay, hi Cyril, what do you suggest to put on the skin after a 10 minute mask AHA or BHA? The other is something that the skin could benefit from the most. It's actually, it's actually your normal routine. The only thing that you need to focus even more is of course layering your hydrating products, the more the better. So you can either just rely on products. 
I mean, the one that I'm always promoting without any surprise, this one, this is the Adalabo, the premium, the premium lotion. It also could be the more lightweight one, which is the Coco Dune lotion. So layer it several times, actually. You do your um, AHA, you do one coat, maybe a minute after a second coat, a third coat, you can go up to seven to 10 coats, like really like drench your skin and concentrate all this goodness, do it in the evening. And then use like a thick moisturizer like to really lock in um, everything. Um, hello Cyril, I am prepping myself to beat uh, the tolerance to, uh, for retinol, okay. Uh, but I am worried about my skin if I had any reasons to stop it. Eh? What would happen if my skin is so? Okay, so first of all, don't be worried. If you are someone who are really worried about retinol, what I would advise you is to start with the low concentration of retinol such as 0.3 and like I have said in the beginning of this slide go slowly so you buy the 0.3 you use it maybe three times per week for at least a week then every other night for one to two weeks you see how your skin reacts and then every single night for at least a month to two months and you see how your skin reacts if your skin is in perfect condition you may think if you need to, um, to introduce 1% retinol, for example, if you want more. And if you want to introduce 1% retinol after the 1.3%, do it maybe twice per week at, for a week, then three times per week for another week, and then every other night for one to two weeks, and then transition to every single week. And you start to see your sweet spots, I would say. Uh, if you can tolerate it um, every single night, go ahead. But take your time, don't use any other form of um, potential irritants such as AHA, BHA, and social oils, uh, drying alcohol, especially during this period. Bonjour from the US. Hello. Uh, can you recommend something similar to the Crave um, Matcha Amp Hydrating Cleanser for Oily Skin? Uh, that cleanser is not in stock uh, right now. Um, from the United States, uh, what else can I recommend? Um, I have a video about my favorite second cleansers. Uh, I'm thinking about one currently. Uh, you have this one, but it's not, um, but it's very gentle. This is the Aven, the extremely gentle lotion. Uh, this one would be probably not, um, uh, I mean, the, the cleansing uh, power will be probably uh, too low for you. Uh, you can actually uh, keep it on the skin for a bit longer. Um, yeah, for now, I don't, I don't remember one like just that struck my mind. So uh, check my video about my favorite second cleanser. I have a different um, option. Okay, uh, you can try by also the sunscreen from um, Crave Beauty. Hey Cyril, what sunscreen do you suggest that are easily uh, accessible in the US that has high PPD value? It can be a sunscreen from another country. Yeah, this is very tricky. Um, you can try the one from Crave Beauty. I think the UV protection is around uh, 22. Also, Japanese sunscreen are pretty easy um, to find in the United States, especially on Amazon.com. Uh, and this is what I would uh, actually do. But I don't have much op options because most brands, unfortunately, they don't disclose the UV protection. So basically, we don't know, which is a problem, of course. Does vitamin C fade freckles? How about other actives? Um, so yes, by vitamin C, I mean, I mean L-ascorbic acid. You also have an excellent derivative for this. You have the tetraizole palmitate form. You also have the one from Neo, the ethylate ascorbic acid. So it's 3 o ethyl l ascorbic acid. This one also um, is quite excellent. Uh, actually. Um, but again, uh, when you have hyperpigmentation on the skin, so you need to make the difference between like a proper freckles that are basically natural and a sunspot sun damage. If it is like a proper freckles, maybe it will be even harder to remove because this is sort of natural for, um, for your skin, basically. Um, check my video. Uh, I have a whole one that was filmed in dreadful condition. I look horrendous, but that's, but the, <laughs> I would say the, um, the video is informative. This is the one for uh, the hyperpigmentation terminator. This one I go really like in depth about this one. 
Uh, which sunscreen from the brand Easing can you recommend and you have tried? Um, so I've tried the Spot Prevent one. I talk about it on um, on my video about high UVA protection sunscreen. It is a recent one, so you can um, check it. Uh, 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 Cyril, can you recommend makeup brand that are high quality concealer, foundation, lipstick, and mascara? Oh. Uh, I don't do makeup, so uh, it is very difficult for me. Of course, the best would be uh, without any perfume. Uh, a foundation that I like, but I don't use it that uh, often, is the one from Shiseido, the Synchro Skin, I think <laughs> it is name. I have a post um, on my Instagram. Th this foundation is quite good and without any perfume, so this I like. Um, it is better to find um, a foundation without any perfume. And of course, what I always advise you is Take your sunscreen, so the one that I have here, but it doesn't have to be this one. This is the Innisfree, the long lasting uh, sunscreen SPF 50 plus. When you're going to choose your um, foundation, you take it with you and you're going to swatch the, sun the foundation on top of your sunscreen. This is very important, especially if it has a white cast that you want to correct it. So like that, you can um, basically um, match the shade on top of the sunscreen and you can also just see how the formulation reacts to the sunscreen. Very useful tip. Um, what do you think about the Eminence Licorice Root uh, Serum? I've never tried it, so I cannot tell you. Uh, how do you layer Great Barrier Relief? So Great Barrier Relief from um, Crest Beauty is a null base serum, so you need to layer it after you uh, hydrating products. So you can use your hydrating uh, toner, for example, your hydrating serum, and then you use the Great Barrier Relief. And if you need to, you can use your moisturizer and then your uh, sunscreen. This is a very interesting formula. I have an old video that I think I have filmed while, while I was still in the United States visiting my friend, I think. Which sunscreen from the brand is Dean? I have already answered this one. Hi, Siri. Your channel is amazing. Thank you so, so much. Uh, are you from Vietnam, by the way? Maybe. What do you think about benzoyl peroxide? Is it too aggressive for the skin? So I don't talk a lot about um, basically drugs. So uh, by drugs, I mean medicine that are only prescribed by doctors. Why? Because they should be prescribed by doctors, as simple as like that. So benzoyl peroxide is a peroxide. So therefore it is going to release uh, oxygen. So free radicals. So I'm not, I would say, a big fan of it. If you can find um, uh, with your dermatologist, of course, an acne treatment without it, I think it would be Better. Of course, if you are uh, still a teenager and you have a lot of inflammatory acne that leaves scars and etc., of course, go for it. Um, but I would try to um, to avoid it and probably try also azelaic acid. This I don't exactly know, but most dermatologists they tend to prescribe uh, adapalene and benzoyl peroxide to um, to basically um, uh, correct and treat acne but they don't prescribe azelaic acid despite the fact that when you leave the scientific literature 20 percent of azelaic acid uh, could be as efficient as retinoid so i don't exactly know why see the cream from in wash it's gentle and goes great at cleaning yes it is uh indeed it is a, a great one um indeed probably for all your skin type you can find this one in the united states and actually it's pretty easy to find on amazon.com i also think that ulta Ulta.com do, does also sell this one, the um, Foaming Wash from Curel. And uh, again, if you have oily skin, especially uh, on the oilier part, like the T-zone, what you can start to do is to just to apply it on the T-zone and leave it maybe for 20 seconds, and then uh, wash your um, cheeks area, for example. Do you have any recommendation for diabetic skin barrier compromise? Uh, yes, I do. The Curel line would be amazing uh, for you because indeed, uh, so you don't know this because I've never really talked about it, but what I was still working as a researcher on uh, in my lab, I was doing what we call fundamental uh, science, so not exactly um, something related to a disease, but my uh, my subject was really close to uh, diabetes, to diabetes. So I do know a lot. So I do know a lot about it. Uh, one of the symptoms is, of course, uh, impairment of the skin uh, barrier. Uh, so try the Curel line, especially the um, Curel milk, followed by the um, uh, Curel the moisturizer. My God, this combination is simply amazing. Try this one. Lucy Liu. Um, mm, mm, mm. Hi, Cyril. Did you find a dupe for SVR Severe Clear? 
Absolutely. Um, the one from uh, Neostrada, they have a lotion with 50% of PHA. So check my video that I'll publish tomorrow, so on Sunday. Uh, I will talk about this one. I didn't order it, but I've looked at the formula. I'm pretty sure that it is um, an amazing one. I did want to find a, a dupe for SVR, first of all, because it has perfume and I don't like this. And the second reason is also because uh, it is not easy to find SVR uh, worldwide. So, and also the even other reason, because I've asked uh, SVR, I've bought so many products on them and the uh, PR team are and not that good, I'm just putting this uh, out there. I'm like, come on, I'm like almost the only one that talks about your brand, so make a little effort. I've spent like a lot of money with them anyway. Hi Cyril, did you find a dupe for SVR? I've already an answer. Brad, hello from England. Hello, hello from Paris. Does KJKSC work? Yes, it does. It also depends on the, uh, on the pH of the formula and also on the concentration. Um, of course, only use uh, as treating, it is not, um, it's always the same thing. When you have your pigmentation, if you only rely on one active in general, they don't work that much. You do need um, a, a, several actives, which is why I did like a full routine to explain it. I think this is also one of the main problems is when you go on YouTube, there are a lot of YouTubers that are going to talk about excellent tactics, but if you don't know how to combine them and what works together or not, this is how you can really achieve like wonderful results. Uh, uh, uh. Any a cream for direct acne people, uh, like spot lotion or anything? So you, I, I guess you, you mean a product to treat um, pimples. So uh, I have an Instagram post. This is true that I've never done a video about this. So you have different way to manage it. To manage it. Uh, if you are someone who tends to pick to your pimple that you know that you will pop them, which is not good, especially because um, if you um, touch them far too much and the infection uh, spread deep down in the dermis, you will have a red marks that will be even more visible to even a scar. So you need to be very careful. I do find that patches uh, on pimples are excellent for this because they are going basically to calm down the inflammation. So I really like this. Uh, so the one that I use uh, are from By Wish Trend. They are the clay patches, something I really like them. I also tried the one from Cost AX. They also works uh, really well. And like this, you are not going to touch um, your pimples. One product that does work and actually it has uh, uh, an essential oil from tea tree, this is uh, the Santella Blemish Balm. You also have the one from Uriage, the SOS paste that also works pretty well. At the end of the day, when you come back at home, you just apply a thick amount about it. I'm pretty sure also that the um, now very famous patches from Zika um, are also excellent actually uh, to treat it because you basically have salicylic acid under or close. Are closest, I'm pretty sure that those ones also are excellent, but they are very pricey. So this is what I would do. Um, mm -mm -mm. Uh, a question from Peter. Hello, Peter. Uh, resistant or friction resistant are not official terms in the EU. You can only claim water resistant. Yes, exactly. And I, th I think this is actually a big issue. Uh, this is something that is very important in Japanese uh, sunscreen. You can clearly see that there is a main difference. Like in Europe, uh, the regulation for sunscreen is very, very strict. I have to say we have like one of the best of the world. The other country um, is Australia. In Australia, they have like a, also an amazing regulation for sunscreen. Basically, brands cannot formulate it like sort of bad sunscreen, which is of course, <laughs> Excellent. The problem though is that um, most European sunscreen, they don't emphasize enough about the texture, the feel of it. So if you go to the beach, to the swimming pool and etc., if, if you are a greasy mess, I don't think that it is a main issue. But on a day-to-day -day basis, no, it's not working, especially when you are like uh, visiting a city or etc. If the sunscreen doesn't set, it is going to slide and move um, everywhere, especially for those uh, of you who have all your skin type or simply uh, on the arms if it is like really tacky, really greasy, it's going to transfer um, everywhere. So this is a problem. You don't have this issue uh, in Japan. I mean, at the end of the day, especially for the body, mostly for the body, not for the face, uh, having actually a sunscreen with probably a lower UVA protection, so 120, um, but that sets really well, probably it will provide a better protection on the body on the long run than another one that is very, very heavy. Um, to give you an example, last summer I was um, visiting uh, an island in France, which is Corsica, so it's uh, very close to Sardinia in Italy. 
So uh, very hot weather, I did a trek for uh, a whole day. So basically I was outside uh, walking for almost 12 hours. So a very long one, uh, my arms were um, exposed to the sun. I almost covered all my face, so I did not have any issue. I used the, um, a sunscreen from Ultrasun, this is the Extreme something. This one was super greasy. It did move even though I did reapply and I did have a little bit of tanning, so not good. Uh, hello from Canada. I know you love Geek and Gorgeous and Fletcher C Booster. Can you recommend another vitamin C serum? Because I can't get those two. Um, so I know there is one from Men Love, Man Love, something like that. That is probably also very good. And the one from Timeless also. I will have to, to try them, of course. But just by looking at the formula, they, that looks very good. How, what do you think about the new Rare Tail from Geek Eye Gorgeous? Um, the overall formula looks very excellent, very affordable, so I really like them. Um, so my only issue I would say with retinol is that when you are reading the research paper, the scientific papers, we don't have like the real proof that when you apply them on the skin, it is going to boost your collagen and elastin. This is extremely important because I want to make sure that if you are using a gold standard retinoids, is that it is going to um, uh, to basically boost the synthesis of collagen and elastin, which is not we don't have the proof for retinol, so this is why I still recommend you retinol. This is uh, the reason, basically. Uh, uh, uh. Is it okay to apply copper peptides before retinol? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Hello from Oslo. Hello. Uh, I need to visit Oslo. I've been uh, in the Northern Europe. I've been to Copenhagen. I love it so much. I've been to uh, Sweden, also to Stockholm. I have also loved it, so now I need to visit Oslo. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the SPF uh, zinc it over? Uh, I don't know it, so I cannot really uh, tell you. Like I have said, um, if it only relies on zinc oxide, probably the UVA tap one absorption is not going to be um, super good. Can you comment on the Adalabu, the UV white gel? I saw a picture of it in a, on the UV gun. It looks like it gives uh, an average coverage. So, um, Okay, UV cameras uh, are not like the proper tool to, um, to really measure like the UV protection, um, but it can help to know if you have an even coverage. So I do know that, uh, and this is from my friend Razila Cosme, she's uh, a Japanese blogger and she reviews a lot of uh, Japanese sunscreen. So um, actually, um, the sunscreen I basically um, divide it into moisturizer that have a UV protection built in and like proper sunscreen that are supposedly to be more long lasting and etc. So if it is not like, long lasting enough, probably they are still going, of course, to provide protection for two hours because they have to. This is the, the regulation, but probably the, um, the overall uh, application etc. will be less long lasting, whatever it means. Um, so the quantity and also the, um, uh, the, um, uh, the texture. When you have a creamy texture, it is easier to have an even coat. When it is very watery, very liquidy, it is easy basically to not have an even coat. So for all those type of sunscreen that are very runny, or like this one, for example, what you do need to do is to apply two coats of those one. One heavy coat with the proper amount that you need. So one fourth of a teaspoon only for your face unless you exactly know how much you need. So in that, in that case, you wait it. You wait a little bit and then you reapply a second coat so you can apply um, a less coat. Those ones are good sunscreen on an everyday basis, basically when you are mostly at home or mostly at work. Not if you are spending all your day outside, but they are more, I would say, elegant to, um, to wear. Hello from Mexico. Hello. Uh, what do you think about Avin? What is the best line? I'm not a big fan of Avin. I do like some of the sunscreen, though. Uh, I also love the, the cleanser. This one, the extra medium tall um, uh, lotion is actually an excellent one, but I'm not a big one. Hi, Cyril. Hello from New York. Hey. Turner Essence Serum, do you recommend for extremely oily and sensitive skin? Um, so you can go with the classic one, the Coco Junglation from Adalabo. You can also choose a very light one, which is the Claire's, the support preparation, but should the unscented one. This one also for oily skin is an excellent one and you can actually layer it. Um, 
do I have another one to uh, recommend you? Maybe the one from uh, Cars AX that contain propolis, unless you are allergic to it. Uh, yeah, uh, greeting from Copenhagen. Oh, I love Copenhagen. Uh, I've been many times to Copenhagen, to Copenhagen maybe four times, because uh, when I was still working in my lab, uh, I had a lot of consortium with other stem cell researchers um, in Copenhagen. I mean, this is such a beautiful city. You uh, Really, if you have the opportunity to, to visit the northern part of Europe, I mean, like Stockholm and Copenhagen, they are so beautiful. Very different, but also the cultural aspect is, uh, I do find it very, uh, very nice and very um, interesting. Not to mention that if you are into blonde people in Copenhagen, yeah, you have like beautiful, beautiful people with beautiful blue eyes also. I mean, the women and the men are really beautiful if you like, um, uh, if you are like a blonde type, I would say. And the peoples are also very nice, I have to say, very friendly. I really, really love uh, Copenhagen. Uh, okay. Do, do, do. Um, okay, hi from San Francisco. Ha, ah, hello. I absolutely have to go to California, really. Uh, 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 I just hear you say it is okay to use copper peptide with tretinoin. Um, yes, but like always, you, especially with tretinoin, you need to be very careful. You need to be very careful that you really tolerate it. But uh, tretinoin is not uh, formulated at a low pH, so it, it is not a major issue to use it with uh, copper peptides. As always, make sure that you tolerate well the tretinoin for at least, and I say at least three months, and then you can reintroduce another active such as uh, copper peptides. Um, for example, uh, copper peptides, you cannot use it with um, an acidic product. So, uh, for example, your vitamin C, the aloscopic acid serum, uh, you cannot use it with an AHA or a BHA. And of course, go slowly, don't like uh, going to town uh, immediately. You introduce it maybe once, you see how your skin react, then every other day and you transition to um, every single uh, evening. This is very, very important. When you are using especially 1% retinol or like the hardcore tretinoin, go very slowly with your actives and introduce them one by one. Um, okay, I love your info on sunscreen, thank you. I live in the US and every single sunscreen formulated here feels like a lava on my face. Love the pre green level and scented one. Skin is very sensitive and uh, reactive. Yeah, I know this is a major issue. Uh, in the United States, I have to say that most sunscreen are really crap. And the problem, especially if, if you are someone who tends to be sensitive or basically you react to some UV filters, like for example, you have breakouts, uh, or your, your skin just don't feel good after them, which could happen. Uh, it is not easy to find an alternative. And also you never know the damn UV protection, at least with Asian sunscreen, you have a peer rating. So you know at least that you have a PPD value of 16. Like I have said, most likely most of them are a 120. Um, and also they just don't feel good. Uh, this is what it is crazy. Uh, so yeah, the Purito on a day-to-day -day basis is actually um, an, an excellent one. Uh, do you know the Curanel Aqua Gel, the cleaning scrubbing agent, a Japanese product? Uh, or is it Cure, maybe Cure Aqua, Aqua Gel? No, I don't know this one, so I cannot uh, tell you, I'm sorry. What's your favorite niacinamide serum or toner? Um, it depends. I do not think that, ni I know that everyone is praying on niacinamide. I also have a video where I'll tell you more about it. Do I think that this is an absolute requirement for niacinamide in every skincare routine? Uh, no, actually no. Uh, from time to time, I don't use it. I am, I've been using niacinamide for quite some time. When I say for quite some time, I mean like for more than a month now because of my video that will be uh, for tomorrow. So niacinamide is interesting if you are uh, acne prone with, um, with inflammation, it can help. Also, if you have very dry skin, simply because uh, niacinamide has been shown to promote the synthesis of uh, especially ceramide. And it is known that in atopic skin time, very, very dry skin, um, the skin is deprived from uh, ceramide. So this is one of those molecules that are uh, very um, interesting. Uh, so my favorite one, uh, so you have the Geek and Gorgeous that I really love, very, very affordable. You also have the one from The Ordinary, as simple as that. Uh, or in every toner, actually, it is not like, a, um, 
uh, a main issue. Hello from Southern California. Hello, I really want to go to, um, to California. I really like in the United States, there are basically three places that I'm really eager to go. I want absolutely to go back to New York because I love New York really. Like New York um, is so, so different from the rest of the United States. I really love everything about it. I also love Chicago. Oh my God, Chicago is so, such a beautiful city. Oh, I also want to go to Washington, Washington DC. I have a, a friend that lives in Virginia Beach. So last time I've been to Washington DC, it's insanely beautiful, really insanely beautiful. And I want to go also to, um, to California. I love to travel really. Uh, hello from Singapore. I also want to go back to Singapore. Basically, I want to travel like crazy, as you can see. Uh, the coffee in Singapore is amazing, like amazing. I really love like the deep, deep black coffee. Uh, hello from Portugal. Hello. Um, okay. Uh, uh, hi, Siri. Can you share information about how to avoid Santan and love from Sweden? So it starts with, of course, sunscreen and choosing the good sunscreen for the, um, uh, the situation, basically. So when you know that you will be exposed to uh, what I call a lot of sun because you are going to walk outside for a very long time, because you are going to the beach, because you are going, I don't know, to do something in your garden for a long time, because you are traveling as simple as that, or simply because you leave or you are planning to go on vacation on a place where the UV index is very high, you need a hardcore sunscreen, like really, you do. Um, so choose, of course, a European one if you can. The best one are the one that have at least a UV protection of 30. And of course, an SPF 50 plus, but I always recommend them, never go below. The second thing that is also of extreme importance is simply clothes. Wear your clothes. You always see me with those type of t-shirt because I can do this. When I am outside, I do it often. So like this, like the back of my neck is protected. Also, when I am outside all day long, what I do is that I wear like a light scarf or a t-shirt and I put it around my neck. Like this, I am uh, protected. I also have a cap that I bought in Taiwan. So this one has, uh, so it is a cap with a long, uh, long stuff in the front. And I also have like a, like a sort of tissue that I, and I can cover my face. Uh, big sunglasses like Bibuji wear like those damn big glasses and currently also wear a mask. If you wear your mask plus sunglasses plus a big hat, I mean, you're in business. Um, try also to avoid all the tank tops because especially the decollete, oh my God, please don't do this. Or wear like a sort of scarf or protective um, something. This is going to help. And this is how I managed to basically never town. Uh, 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 okay. Um, Paula Choi's favorite products, aside from the original and Omega moisturizer. Mm, I didn't try much of the product, I have to say, from Paula Choi's. Oh yes, I love, but this is a sort of retinol one, the Ceramide uh, Firming Moisturizer. Hot oh, this formula, oh my God, this is such a beautiful formula, really, I love this one. The blend of uh, derivative of vitamin C, of Ceramide and also retinol, this one is simply amazing, simply amazing. Um, also from the Omega range, the Serum one, uh, excellent one. I will have to try more from them. Or oh, the Azelaic Booster, my God, beautiful. Beautiful formula. Jenny, I just started the Ordinary 5% Lactic Acid and 0 .0 0.0.2 Retinol. Oh, would, uh, so it's probably the 0.2% Retinol, not the 0 0.2. How would I fit it both in my PM routine? You cannot use them on your PM routine. Uh, so lactic acid, like every type of acid is formulated with a low pH, and one three. So what could happen with retinol? So the retinol that we can use, this is a little bit like um, a geek, a geek. <laughs> um, so, I mean, nerdy, nerdy. My English is a little bit sloppy. Um, so uh, retinol, the retinol that is used in cosmetic is trans retinol. So the transform uh, could be isomerized into the cis retinol and the cis retinol can be used, cannot be used by uh, your cell. So if you add an acid and then your retinol, you may uh, isomerize your retinol into cis retinol so you will lose some of the potency. So in that case, you will have to use the retinol in the evening and your lactic acid in the morning, for, um, for example. Please, Cyril, you thought, oops, ah, oh, uh, Please, Siri, you thought about uh, sheet masks. They are not a necessity, but I do like them. Uh, I mean, if you want to, uh, uh, 
I have like um, a video about them. This is my uh, skincare and quarantine basically to take care of you. If you are feeling like doing like a, um, uh, a longer skin routine, check this video. But please choose a sheet mask that is perfume free because you are basically going to use a sheet mask with perfume. You will be infusing your skin with perfume. I don't like this. Um, Cyril, what is the deal with SPF 100 in the, unis, in the USA? What we don't have it that in Europe. So the reason is because in Europe, every SPF of 60 or above should be um, uh, mentioned as an SPF of 50 plus. This is exactly the same with uh, in S, uh, with um, uh, Asian, Asian one. So this is why the proper value of the SPF is not disclosed. This is such of um, I would say a weird uh, regulation. So here are the reasons. It's because at a very high SPF, so SPF 80 and 100, the, um, the difference in terms of sunburn is very difficult to, um, to be uh, seen by the experimentator. Uh, what you need to understand is that the SPF rating and also the PA rating, so the, using the PPD um, um, ratings, I mean, met methods to measure the UVA protection is an in vivo experiment about a biological effect on the skin. So SPF means um, sunburn. It is, it is not completely related to what we call the UVB uh, absorption of the filters. So basically, it is difficult to assay on the skin, which is why they are all labeled SPF 50 plus. But in terms of uh, UVB transmittance to the skin, of course, an SPF of 100, even 120, um, they will be more protective against uh, UVB. You will have less UVB, even though the difference in terms of sunburn will not be a marginal one. Uh, this is something that you really need to understand in your head is that you need to make a difference between an acute response of your body, like the tanning with UVA or um, a sunburn with UVB and the, um, the daily effect, the aging effect basically of uh, UV. There's a difference uh, between the two. Basically, the less UV, whether they are UVB, UV eta 2 or UV eta 1 that goes into the skin, the better for sure. Okay, I'm going maybe to answer to two uh, more questions and I will uh, leave you. It's been already an hour that we are uh, sh chatting together. Good day from Australia. Oh, you are from Australia. Um, so I started using Polar Choice SPF lip balm. What are your opinion about the uh, about SPF for lips? Is it necessary? And what level of protection do we need? Uh, yes, it is absolutely uh, necessary. I need to film a, a video about them. Uh, like for the rest of the body, uh, you need an SPF of 50 plus. I do not think that um, Polar Choice actually have a, a lip balm with um, an SPF of 50 plus. So uh, I would not uh, use it. So the one that I do recommend, so I have one here, as you can see, I've used it quite a bit. This is the Uriage, the Baryasan, the stick. So you have two, you have the mineral one, uh, the organic base, the yellow one is actually quite good. This one, I can actually show it to you. Uh, it does have, can you see that it has like a slight white cast? very minimum though it is a good one i always actually apply them over a lip balm because my lips are like the driest on the planet earth so i do have to, to wear um, a lip balm uh, underneath whether if, if it is in a pot or in a stick format um you can use the one from bioderma also the sick bio stick excellent one really an excellent one uh, which one? The one from SVR, if you can get your hand off. But if you're living on Australia, actually every um, stick uh, will work for you because the, uh, the regulation in Australia is also amazing for um, UVs. But I don't know them and I think they're very difficult to find on, on the European market, unfortunately. Uh, um, so does BHA consult the effect of retinols? Not exactly, but if you use the BHA at the same time, so if you retinol, uh, like I said, it can isomerize the retinol, so you will have to use the BHA in the morning and the retinol in the evening, but not at the same time. Uh, may you review the RDMA Protect AD Sunscreen SPF 50 Plus? Um, yes, so uh, unfortunately, RDMA does not disclose the UVA protection. This one is still also M uh, based. I've already tried two from them. The Invisible Fluid from Adama is excellent and probably the 
the cream of the jet, the fluid, that is also excellent. The invisible one has a matte uh, finish. It has tinnitus of M, so it has a little white cast. It also has perfume and functionality. Hello from New York. Hello. I wanted to try Geek and Gorgeous as a legacy derivative. Can I use this uh, while also using tretinoin? Yes, most likely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And this is not also at a low pH, so it's not going to exfoliate uh, your skin. This is also why I love it um, so much. Uh, merci beaucoup Cyril, j'adore ta chaîne, ta personnalité, tout gros bisous, paillettes de Valence, oh Valence c'est trop trop beau, uh, so it's uh, someone who, um, who's telling me that, uh, who thanks me for my videos and uh, this person is from Valencia in Spain, beautiful, beautiful, especially the opera house from um, uh, Calatrava, I think uh, the name of the architect, you need to go to the opera house in um, Valencia incredible simply incredible okay hi cyril from greece my question um i'm thinking to start tretinoin after august because i am not i'm in a very hot iceland is it better to start in the fall instead to about all of yes probably especially if you want to try tretinoin what i would actually do if i were you especially if you are new to it i would first start with retinol 0.3 retinol, if you're in Greece, maybe you can find the one from SVR, the 0.3%, so this is the ampoule A. Try this one for at least, at least a month, then transition to 1% treatment, um, to 1% retinol, I mean, the one from Polacho, the 1% treatment, um, and you do it at least for one to two months, and then transition to uh, tretinoin, to at least, uh, yeah, probably the 0.3 retinol, do it at least for a month to two months, then 1% retinol again for maybe um, one to two months and then again uh, you can transition to uh, tretinoin but it's easier to, to do it like this. Hello from Dubai. Ah, hi. This is so incredible. We are all over the world. I really, really love this. Just to, wanted to ask you if you think the pH turner from the inky list of the ordinary uh, lactic acid. Um, so I don't know the concentration of the pH turner from the inky list. Um, so I cannot tell you. Um, is it better for someone who hasn't tried chemical exfoliant yet? If you have never tried it, you can probably. So it depends on your routine, of course. If you don't use um, retinoids, for example, you don't necessarily have to, uh, to start with such a gentle one unless you have extremely sensitive skin. You also need to think um, how you want to incorporate it. Are you someone, the type of person that you want like to fix one day on your week and in, therefore use a more potent one that, such as the 30% AHA plus 2% BHA? So in that case, if you want to introduce this one, use it only um, once a week, for example. Every uh, Sunday to almost twice a week. Be careful because if you are new to exfoliation, in the, in the beginning you will try it and you'll say, oh my God, it gives me like great results and you want to use it the, another day and another day. Because you are new to exfoliation, use skin barrier. So the skin that you can, the layer that you can touch with, you, with your finger is very thick. So basically in the beginning, um, it, it can also make sense to use it more often. But then when you have found a balance, don't use it every single day. Use it only maybe twice a week. Uh, conversely, if you are someone who you prefer like to use like um, a toner, for example, every single day or every uh, other day, you can simply introduce glycolic acid, like 5% glycolic acid. So it could be the one from um, Crave Beauty if you have access to it, or it could be the one from The Ordinary, the glycolic acid 7%, for example. You can use it every other night for at least a week, then transition to every single day and see how your skin reacts. Don't over exfoliate. If you, stand, if you tend to have like a little bit of sensitivity, uh, just decrease the frequency and find your sweet spot. This will depend on your skin type and your and also on your other um, actives. Uh, the last thing that I want also to tell you about this, if, if you are someone who are acne prone, you need to be very careful because this is normal that you purge. The first time that you introduce um, exfoliant, unfortunately, you are going to purge, so be prepared to, uh, be prepared to eat, and the purging can go for as long as two months. Unfortunately, it could be quite long, actually. Okay, thank you for doing this live stream. Uh, you are more than, than welcome. Uh, please consider doing this maybe one every two months or so. Yeah, this is actually um, a good idea and I also love it. Uh, I do a lot of live also on my Instagram account, so if you want to chat with me like this, you can definitely go to my uh, also Instagram. Um, thoughts on the Retistar Retinol patent? Um, I 
think uh, this is an encapsulation of her original, if I'm not mistaken. It's been a long time since I've uh, read about it, so most likely it is an excellent uh, thing to do. Uh, a good thing to use encapsulated retinol is that the absorption of retinol would be at a slower pace, and therefore it would be, um, I would say, more gentle for, for your skin. Your skin will be able to tolerate it um, a bit better. It would be easier for the skin that have like a super strong shot of retinol. I mean, on the hand, at the end of the day, it all depends on why you're using it. If you are like me, for example, I don't need to correct anything yet on my face. Like I don't have any major wrinkles, no implementation, etc. So I want the retinol basically to keep my skin in your mode. So I don't really need like to have a super strong uh, treatment. Conversely, if you are more in your 40s, um, or older, or if you have like major pigmentation and etc., you would want actually to have like a stronger uh, one. So go to one person. Okay, so I think that's it for um, for today. So I will most likely do another live also uh, here on uh, YouTube because this is so lovely to be able like to connect with you. I really um, enjoyed this. Also, don't forget to check my Instagram account. As always, I'm Cyril Laurent. I'm going to put uh, the description of, uh, of this live to tell you a little bit more about it. Uh, and you can also, like I said, check my Instagram. Um, I can't I do a lot of live, like uh, almost every single day. Most of them are in English. Uh, only on Saturday, this is the French uh, session. So thank you so, so much for being here. Tomorrow I will have also um, another video. It is going to be about anti-aging and pores because, well, basically we do want to have uh, both of them. So <laughs> live and well, I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.